Hi, Keith here. In this video I'm going to look at some graphing options in Minitab. Because of the way I'm going to do this one, I will probably fumble around a little bit. That's because I'm not going to focus on one specific thing and I'm going to go through a whole range of things. So here I have the data that I'm going to work with. As usual it comes from my simulation looking at the effects of hydrocarbon pollution on marine benthic invertebrates. And I've got three locations, that's the three oil platforms and I've got five impact samples and five control samples well away. And then in the first column, as you can see, I have got a label for each of the samples indicating whether it's an impact or control and which location it's from. Okay, so let's start with a scatter plot. And I'll do a scatter plot with groups. I'm not going to put a line on it because I don't know whether that would be appropriate at this point. But I do have different groups. So here we are, and let me plot number of species versus hydrocarbon. And then down here is where I pick the categorical variables that I want to group the samples by. And I can have one or multiple variables in here, up to three. Personally, going past two for a scatter plot tends to make things a little bit messy in my opinion. And we'll play around a little bit because it says, and actually it doesn't say, uh, sometimes when it brings up it says outermost first, but it doesn't for this particular one because it's not appropriate, but we'll look at another situation where it does. So I'll put those two there. Now I'm going to go through the different options here. Scale. This is pretty obvious in terms of what it is. It's the options for the X and Y scale and you can set them as you want. For instance if you want to put major ticks on the upper and right axis. Uh, and down here grid lines which generally look pretty ugly and referenced lines which can be useful. So for example if um, four parts per million is a cutoff level of pollution. Um, I could put that in there. Actually, I've got HC on the x-axis, so it would be hydrocarbons there, and that will put in a, put a line on. And if the maximum number of species is 50, maybe I put 25 in there as indicating halfway. Labels. These are just different titles, but over here we've got the option for data labels. So I can put on the Y values, use the row numbers, or use labels from a column such as that. Data view. Okay, for a scatter plot, I've got the symbols. Uh, probably not going to put a connect line or project lines to the axes or shade in the area. I could put on a, a regression, but as I said, I haven't looked at the data yet, so I don't know whether that would be appropriate. If we're looking at a time series, then I can add in a smoother. And this will apply a smoothing function, so that if the relationship bounces around a bit, this will give you a smoother kind of relationship. It will show the trend rather than all the jagging and you can fiddle with the options there. Multiple graphs. And I've done other videos showing how to set up multiple graphs. And here if I've got multiple variables, I don't, so this is not appropriate. Here I can decide whether to separate graphs by particular variables. I can do it on panels or in separate graphs. So on panels I could select and separate by IVC or by location. 
I won't do that yet. Lastly, data options, and this is if I want to include or exclude particular rows. Generally, for me, I prefer to make another worksheet that has the data I want to graph, because then I don't have to fiddle about with this stuff. Um, include missing, um, that may be appropriate or not, and um, if it's summarised data, we might use a column to indicate how many times a particular observation had been seen. But again, that's not appropriate here. OK, so let's go with the graph. There it is. Now you can see I've got the reference lines in here for four parts per million for hydrocarbon and for 25 species, S number across there. And then you can see the data labels have popped on there. Uh, it looks a bit messy and I wouldn't normally do that, especially as I've got a key over here. But I just wanted to illustrate how that worked. OK, now I am looking at this and what can I do? Well, the first thing I'd do is probably go here and go over to Labels and turn them off because they make it a bit messy. Now that's looking better. Now I want to illustrate Minitab's three click function when it comes to graphs. So here we go. Looking at the symbols I would like to change these to make the grouping more obvious. So click gets me all the symbols. Second click gets me a particular group so I can work on that group and third click whoops, now it's not again. Third click gets me a particular symbol and then I can modify an individual symbol if I want to bring it to attention for instance. Now I won't go through actually spending the time here while the video is going to set the graph up. Oh, it is a little bit fiddly sometimes. But with the group selected, um, I actually like Control T to bring up the options. Custom, and I can start fiddling with the symbol type, the colour and the size. So looking, I've got control and impact and locations. And I think what I'm going to do is put the control and impact as separate colours and use different symbols for the location. So I've got a blue triangle here for impact. Um, for me, I always like red for impacts. And let's bump it up to size 2. So that's that one, and then the control location for that site is up there. Actually, two looks a bit big. Um, so let's make it that blue and 1.5. Now I'm going to pause the video and go and change the others. Okay, so. I've made those changes, all the controls are blue, all the impacts are red and that makes what's happening on here much clearer. We can see everything with greater than 4 parts per million is pretty much a red impact symbol and all the blues are less than. There's also a bit of a relationship going on here so I might want now to think about putting a curve on here. So I'll select the lot. Um, and sometimes you've got to hunt around to find the options. Now, uh, let's put this up here. Uh, it's not getting up all the options, but one that's not showing up here is showing up obviously is regression, but it's under here. Regression fit. And let's go with the, the cubic there, and that shows what's going on in there very, very nicely. Um, I might again want to fiddle with that line. Control T. 
turn it to be dashed uh, change the color and this time I'll go for it too okay and I'm pretty happy with that aside from perhaps fiddling a little bit with the fonts and size of the labels here on the various axes um, I can make the graph a bit better by doing this and once I've moved the key panel here I can then select the individual headings there and change the text for individual items in the panel itself okay so that's rumbling around with some scatter plots and what we can do with those actually made it just a teeny bit too big there as the font showing up um, let's think about another kind of graph back to the data display here and it would be useful to have a summary of hydrocarbons say an average with error bars graph I'm not going to go through all of these graphs most of them I don't use so uh, scatter plot I use often histogram occasionally um, box plot occasionally and interval plot quite often the others very rarely so interval plot here this gives us a column or a dot with error bars and I've got groups here so it's that option um, I'm not going to go with multiple eyes or multiple Y's okay graph variables graph variables HC here and this is where it says outermost first so if I pick location it will put the locations outermost and I versus C innermost let's just draw it and then see what happens so I'm not going to fill with scale with labels with multiple graphs um, but data view yes into a bar I want a bar and I don't want a symbol the other ones here are fairly obvious and down here I can look at picking things here for attribute assignment but we'll just draw it basic first and then come back so that's what it's going to look like if it's basic um, now I can go back to the selection and change things or I can always see if I can do things in here can I options no groups ah yes and I can do that and there we go now it's overdone it a little bit here as it always does incidentally before I go on you can see outermost first so I picked location first so it's grouping by location and then showing I versus uh, impact versus control and um, that's probably the way I want it for this particular thing because uh, the most relevant comparison is impact versus control as before the three click things still work so click on the bars to select them pick a group uh, and in this case when we've got to an individual bar we're actually picking in at the furthest level that we can get in here now changing things around it's the same as before bring up the attributes and switch to custom and so I've got the pattern I've got the border so this is the pattern and that's none this will be filled as we can see the color um, and the lines options over here is the base position so I'll show you what I mean by there see uh, shifts the base up and down um, oddly it hasn't done it for that perhaps because it was selected
Um, okay, now I'm not going to bother fiddling with the colours and fill patterns here because I think that's pretty obvious. Um, one other thing I'm going to look at here is 95% CI confidence interval for the mean. Now typically with these kinds of graphs we would show a standard error. So click Control T to get options. Here we are. Um, so confidence interval which I can change there. Let's go back to standard error 1 and here. If I'm drawing a column or bar type graph I can do upper sided. Now pool error across here just means uh, simply what it sounds like to plot instead of the error for each individual group to calculate an average error. Um, so the error bar will be the same for every group there. Um, so that and back here again you can change the whiskers size affects the size, how wide they are, colour the three click or two click in this case comes in handy because it does allow us to change all of them at the same time. So there I made them a little bit narrower and put them all the same in black. Okay so what if instead of bar I want to have lines with dots? Okay going to start this the same but with the data view and I've shown this in a different video. Let's have a mean connect, leave the interval bar on and a mean symbol. Uh, now that's not quite what I wanted and this time it will take a little bit of fiddling around to work out to get it exactly the way I want it to show up because I want a line for impact and a separate line for control. Um, purists would say this should never be drawn that way but I'm just going to do it. Now to start with and I will need to fiddle around with this to get it to work okay that's looking more like what I want and now, in fact I've got it pretty well the way I want it to, to show up so that's good. What I want to do is just change the spacing here a bit, they're a bit spread out. So click into the axis options and there's a lot of things to fiddle with here. Let's have alignment so for the text um, if I need to I can put that in at 90 to get the text going up and down the page. If the labels are a bit too wide, font I think is pretty obvious. Click down here to make it go across all of the labels. This is the labels that I want showing. Now I'm going to come back to that one. Um, attributes here again I can change the line, apply across all and change the size of the ticks, but I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, Okay, I never actually fiddle with these things here. This one up there is pretty obvious. These ones I fiddle with and let's make them both down to zero. Um, yeah, start with zero and then go from there. Uh, now that's not working the way I want. What about... Oh. Alright, pause. Sometimes you just have to fiddle. So here we go. Back on the graph. This is the one I want to do. Minus one. And that superimposes them. Sometimes that'll be fine. Probably not on this one, so I probably want a little bit of a gap there, so what about minus 0 0.25? Nah, too big. C 
0.75. That's not too bad. I might just go a little bit more. Okay, now what I really do need to do is change the whiskers because they're way too wide. And then I would start to fiddle around with the... I don't actually seem to have changed them at all. Um, okay, so uh, in, earlier I said changing here changes the width of the whiskers. No, it doesn't. This changes the line. I haven't done these graphs for a little while. How do I change the width of the whiskers? Well, it's actually here in the axes. So changing that number down there for the gap between the clusters changes the width of the whiskers. Now, last thing I said was I was going to look in here at what I'm showing. And I don't really need this IVC thing here because that's in the legend. Um, so I don't need the labels. So I don't need the label on the axis or the tick labels. I don't need the axis label for location, but it's my, I do need the tick labels for location. Um, so there, and then I would start to fiddle around with the other things that we've looked at previously. So one last thing while I'm here on the axes. What about if I want to fiddle with the actual labels themselves? So over here to labels, the tick labels and the axis labels, well, it doesn't matter, I've turned those off. Um, IBC, perhaps I want to go there, yeah, just having trouble selecting in there. Control and impact, and in here, site. Site. Um, site. Is that going to work? No. I shall probably need to put some quote marks in here. As I said, I'm going to fumble around a little bit in this one. It might work. Yes. And there we are. We're on the way to a presentable graph. As before, I can fiddle around with the legend over there. Alright, that's coming up towards 25 minutes. So that seems a good time to finish. Hopefully you get something out of that if you're doing graphs in Minitab.